for my lips real quick. Recording in progress. Okay. okay. Hurry up and do it. All right. I'll go get some petroleum products. <laughs> oh my goodness. I need some one. I don't know where I've got you back. Ugh. I'm going to pull this and can you hear me? Yep. Hopefully not. I put it on the phone. Let's we'll see what I see. What okay. It's a good experiment. Barely hear you. You can barely hear me? Yeah, yeah. I should put the headphones in and do the mic off the phone. Oh, okay. That might work better. If you're hanging with us during all this bird world. Da da da. Can oh, that sounds me? better. Yes, that okay. sounds good. Thanks much better okay all right so um here is this is from the energy information administration and uh what percentage of what they're getting out of or for energy consumption so 37 percent petroleum 32 percent natural gas um 11 percent quote unquote renewable energy we're talking geothermal so solar hydroelectric wind biomass biofuels and wood and 11 percent coal and eight percent nuclear okay my problem with this is the renewal renewable energy they're not taking into account especially in wind or or any of the rest of it that you cannot make solar panels or wind towers Without, without petroleum <laughs> you can't you you can't insulate the wires to connect your electricity from one place to another without petroleum you can't move especially those huge wind generators without petroleum okay you just cannot do any of the other so you may call it renewable it's it's just not because you can't repair the stuff you can't keep a wind generator um but like a wind lubricated. requires petroleum products to keep it lubricated to even unless you're using wind. silicon and then where where are you getting your silicon i mean you know if you're using a silicone based lubricant where are you getting you that? your, uh, your Luke, little pearl would you get me a bowl of beef stew please with your some pearl, cheese on it. your pearl beads are ticking your uh mic oh i'm sorry that's okay there you go that's there better okay um yeah it, it you you just can't do it without it's not it's not possible Okay, I loved this one, okay? This is so cute. Okay, this is actually PETA.org, okay? Vegan leather is often made from polyurethane, a polymer that can be made to order for any designer's whim. It can also be made from innovative and sustainable materials such as pineapple leaves, cork, and apple peels, and other fruit waste and recycled plastic. And, and used to create products that put animal skins to shame. Okay, um, however you feel about wearing animal skins, uh, vegan leather, even if they use banana peels, apple peels, or pineapple leaves. Okay, apple peels and if you wanna they wear to pineapple leaves. Binder. And, and, and they've got to run those machines and stuff to do that. Yes, that a re recycling plant requires petroleum to run, period, to run. end of story. Those, those machines take lubrication. Um, they have motors that take oil and gas 
they everything comes it, it, it just it it does so if if you're really 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 against oil and gas then please any of your vegan leather any of your polyester t-shirts and all of that kind of stuff um get rid of it now take it to the secondhand store because i totally do not believe in just wasting stuff stop putting things you know if you're if you're worried about the environment um stop putting things in the dumpster and as much as possible sakes, don't go to the gulf to protest an oil rig out there in a plastic kayak because then you look like an idiot <laughs> It's embarrassing. If any boat. I don't think there's a boat these days at all that you probably can't. isn't made you without legit, plastic. It is and it almost to impossible to find the motor anything made on. of wood. Uh, like wood canoes are not a thing anymore. And yeah. if you do find one, like I did find one, but it was incredibly old. And someone that had taken good care of it but it was still incredibly old and they were wanting a mint for it for it yeah they were wanting like the price of a new to me car yeah for it. yeah I, I, exactly um wood products and most of that kind of stuff if you're going to make it with wood is made from a wood from a tree that grows pretty quickly right. so i mean not that there aren't some hard wood you know things that are are you know if you want to buy a hardwood item then yeah buy yeah. It, buy used buy antiques thing. if you're wanting buy things to like help that. the planet if you're wanting to help the planet then make sure that you plant deciduous trees because they are the ones that create oxygen and then make sure that for all of your products you are getting wood from coniferous trees conifer trees okay so there's deciduous and then there's conifer and conifer does not put oxygen back into the air and they don't clean the air they're just there they kind of do some stuff for the soil but not a lot they usually kill everything around the soil around them too so if you want to help the planet plant your deciduous and then um plant conifer for use and consumption there you go there you go conifer is a crop there you go. It's a weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, here was another, another good one is different things. Okay. Paraffin wax, which I, I really prefer if I'm going to burn a candle or something, I really prefer either a beeswax or a soy candle. I personally. Soy is nice. And soy yes. is beans that grow in the ground. Yeah and the beeswax and i i don't know how they get this the uh wax out of the soy i i do not know that if somebody else knows that please leave a comment because that would be kind of neat to know if that's something that I you bet can it's do something that requires petroleum <laughs> use too. I, I really wonder i, really I wonder know harvesting the soy you not. you have to use machines and stuff to, to harvest, harvest the soy plants right right so, and, I, and and, and I would much rather use it for wax and um, consumable products like that than to eat it because most soy these days is GMO. So, uh, you know, don't, don't partake of the soy unless you know that it's from a really clean and healthy source. Um, but yeah, uh, most candles, the cheapy candles that you're going to get at the local store are going to be uh, paraffin, which sure. is from, from petroleum products uh if, what else if you have here? you have a lighter cigarette so, lighter lantern yeah your what, kerosene that, and, and once again the kerosene and lighter fluid are byproducts okay yes. so that's something that they're making extra money off of because it's just an extra thing that comes out of it yeah okay? that happens in the distilling and refining process it comes yeah. out and then that. here we have a thread Okay, so uh, oh, yes, we're talking about right. synthetic thread, synthetic polyester. If you go get your dual duty, because I sew, I, I like to make clothes and things. And so if you go buy your all purpose dual duty thread, it is polyester, all of it. 
So, uh, and then your polyester. If you aren't getting cotton fabrics, or animal products, then hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Then it is probably a petroleum based product. Yes, yes. So, I milk, mean, and, and I'm I, I, born in the oil and gas. Honestly, I am all for cotton wool that that's been that's been uh nicely gotten i i'm not for people who are being mean to sheep okay i'm not not for that there are people out there that are very kind and loving to their sheep if you well, do not shear the sheep quite simply wool, people who produce the best wool have to take the best care of their sheep yes if you don't take proper care of your sheep then they don't produce good wool they will good lose quality. it Yes, they will yes. absolutely lose their wool if they are not being loved. Yeah, so, it, it's like your hair. I, you're not going to have nice hair if you're not taking good care of it. You need to have a good diet. You need to be using good products on it. If you're not, your hair isn't going to be healthy. So, I mean, it just makes more sense on the animals. So, yeah, cotton. You're going to make flax, money off of them. You got to take good uh -huh. care of them. Linen comes from flax. Again, cotton and flax cannot be these days unless you want to do it yourself, grow it yourself. It, it cannot be done without petroleum because they're using machines to do it. And the machines take petroleum. The, the wool, it, it's not going to be processed more than likely without petroleum. It, it's, it's just probably not. And it's not going to be shipped to you without petroleum. So, um, so even those natural, and I'm all for those natural products, silk, I kind of go back and forth on how I feel about the silk and you can feel however you want to let us know in the comments, how you feel about silk. It, it's, it's an interesting fabric. Um, I don't know if I feel sorry for the silkworms or not. I really haven't thought too much about it. Silk isn't something that I'm going to use a whole lot of. Did you put some cheese on that? Would you put yeah. some cheese on it for me, please? This is why yeah. you have extra silk. children silk is so that they can that heat up your co coffee and they can feed you. Okay. I just want you all to know that. <laughs> yeah. Silk is something that. Eh, eh, yeah. Most people I, I mean, don't even not, use it. Yeah. Uh, it's not a normal useful. People. Yeah. It's not a useful fabric. I, I it rips don't. Easily. It's yeah. very dainty. I've very pretty. A, few silk things that like missionaries have brought overseas as as a gift and I've got a billfold that I use that is silk and you know it, of course most silk nowadays if it's colored silk then it's probably weighted um with like iron and uh, metals in it and stuff so so it's not as sturdy as it would be of just pure silk by itself if I had the opportunity, <laughs> so he put a slice of cheese. I know we've got shredded cheese. Okay, so I made some minestrone beef stew yesterday, and I put way too many noodles in it. I was Ooh. trying to make things go, yeah. So that's, that's I, I like noodles, there. so I would not complain. Yeah, so, it was macaroni, so it's more uh, like it's a beef. Thread. It's a beef stew slash goulash is what it is. Yeah, uh, past the thread. Then we've got, oof, that doesn't, oh, this is in English. No wonder I'm having trouble with it. Right. So that's something. I don't know what the little green bag is. I don't know. Like okay. Sort of trash bag or something. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, all, all bags. You but. know, it was really funny whenever they started with the grocery stores here, started uh, moving from paper to plastic bags. I still prefer a paper bag because we reuse them at home and yes. you can use those. Oh, we the reuse the plastic too. You but. do not have to throw a paper bag in the trash ever. Yeah. So there is like, that can be a totally, completely zero waste product. And again, it is not made from hardwood tree. Okay, so uh, yep, it is not made so, from a tree that puts oxygen into the air and cleans the air. It is almost one hundred percent of the time made from a tree that does really nothing for our planet that much. Yeah, yeah. And, and and a lot of the paper sacks nowadays quickly. are 
are are recycled and recycling paper is kind of an easier process so recycling products actually and there's some great videos on the internet that tell you about how the recycling process works and once you actually figure out how recycling works you I was disgusted whenever I found out what recycling did and I will never recycle anything ever again because it is more polluting to recycle than to just throw things away or even burn it. You could burn it and not be as polluting as recycling. And whenever I say recycle, I mean, you are recycling it yourself. You are reusing it in a different way. It is not ever going into a dumpster or a recycling bin or anything like that. It is something that you are recycling yourself. The good old fashioned Great Depression way. Those women knew how to recycle everything. Okay. All right. Then we have pills. Um, a lot of your, your fillers, your stuff that sticks it together and things. I always make sure I try to make sure that, uh, our vitamins and things are made with, uh, vegan, uh, products. So take that as you will. Um, but a lot of vegan the barrels, products again, tires. go back to petroleum. Yeah. Tires. Okay. There are so many things that you can do with tires. Um, you should not have your tires. When you have new tires put on your vehicle, you should ask for the old tires back. Okay. And you should take and them home them. and you should find a, re- a way to reuse them. There are ways to reuse those tires. You can do all kinds of neat things with them. So, uh, your research. Yes. Yes. Don't know what this is. I did not realize that this, and then, and then you've got plastic, you've, you've got your plastic toys and things. And and it's hard to find toys now that are die cast metal. I mean, the best toys are die cast metal, you know? So, okay. Next. Oh, am I? No. Oh, maybe that was the end of my We've got all kinds of stuff going on here. I think that may be all of our all of our little pictures. We got the oil history. We got the I think we did. Yeah, I think we pretty much went through everything that I kind of had here. So closing comments on our little I think we covered everything in the discussion, didn't we? Uh let's see. I was gonna go look real quick. Um, I, I, I think we pretty much covered everything in the discussion. Oh, I was going to say, it, it's kind of funny because I, I covered, uh, at the newspaper at the end of last year or later last year, uh, that the U S government had, sanctioned or passed or whatever to take out of oil reserves to help the price of fuel for the people so they took out of reserves and some of the uh representatives were really upset so there was some you know stress going on some drama in the u.s government imagine that imagine uh yeah imagine that and they took out of oil preserve bleh, reserves and put into uh, to dump into the market to bring prices down and some of them were upset because they were afraid something would happen to uh what like a war <laughs> Well, I mean, why, why would something like that happen? You know, so yeah, because it would be a shame if we got into our reserves and then like a war happened where well, it and can our we, oil price or our oil. Uh, and can we also input. discuss the billions of barrels that we are making here in the United States and, and I did not pull up how much we export and how much we import. So why are we even doing that? We're basically trading oil 
and it, we're trading it, cruel crude. I remember back whenever I was in high school doing a study on this and I of course don't have my science project poster or anything anymore but um that if the United States kicked up their full oil production we have been subsidizing other countries be, trying to be nice basically it, uh, oversimplified but basically trying to be nice and help out these other countries by importing their oil some of their oil is maybe a little bit better than ours but we have a flawless pretty much refining system and we have some pretty darn good oil of ours ourselves. um and but we've been importing just to basically help out these other countries and if we kicked up our full production we would not need to depend on anybody else I do remember that from high school. Well, I'm glad you do, because I, I I was your high school teacher and I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that <awful. laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Whenever they get into high school, they start teaching themselves. You just need to kind of regulate or, you know, guide along the way. Um, My math teacher let me out with a D minus because she didn't want to uh, see me again. I don't think it was a minus, but <laughs> it was in there somewhere. <laughs> it was like, oh my goodness. If you do go to college, sweetheart, you're just going to have to take those remedial math courses because I don't know what else to do with you. Um, I, I, I yeah, cheat on those too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I, people don't understand oil and gas. People don't understand what goes what it takes to get it to the pump mm -hmm. to get in into your vehicle and you may think you're going to solve the problem by getting like an electric vehicle and well the electric vehicle nearly everything in the electric vehicle is made with petroleum, petroleum. yep uh, even yep. if it is not a petroleum product in and of itself, it is made with petroleum. And when you plug it into the electricity, that electricity is coming mostly from petroleum. Okay, so you're not going to get rid of petroleum in the next two years I get or in any amount of, yeah, or any amount of time by replacing one petroleum product for another. If you really, really want to slow down on energy consumption, period, end of story, then you need to figure out how to turn off the electricity to your home. Uh, cutting down on electricity does not mean buying all electric appliances. I, and this is my big concern. If you've made it this far in the video or however we get this done, um, if you've made it this far, then this is the real big thing that I want you to get from this. Okay. Are you listening? Is, and especially out here in the Great Plains area, is because of the big ice storm last year in 2021, February 2021, when a lot of people were out of electricity um, because of the big freeze. And because the Southwest Power Pool, which was created during the Great Depression, has told all of those electric and energy companies that they have to pay millions of dollars, or is it billions of dollars, that they have to pay big hunks of money to this bureaucracy that was created as a fine for not providing people with electricity during that time. That fine is being passed down to consumers who didn't have electricity during that time. So you're being paid, you have to pay for not having that electricity. And then with the price of fuel going up, our fuel surcharges on our electric bills and, and other gas bills and everything else, your fuel surcharge, if you look at your bill, is, is going up. So this summer, when everybody hooks up the elect the uh, air conditioning and gets their air conditioning going, and especially in the South where we've got crazy hot weather and bugs, um, your electricity is going to skyrocket this summer. 
So forget the fuel at the pump. If you have an electric hot water heater, an electric cook stove, an electric everything else that these electric companies have been giving you subsidies or breaks or whatever in order to get electric products instead of gas or propane products or appliances, it's going to eat you this year. That's going to kick your rear. Because between that fee, look up Southwest Power Pool, look it up. It is a bureaucracy that was created just for a fun time like this. And I'd like to know where that money is going because it's a nonprofit organization. It is a nonprofit bureaucracy. So where's that money going? Somebody needs to be asking that question. A bunch of people need to be asking that question. Okay. And then uh, your fuel surcharges. So what you need to be doing right now to prepare is you need alternative forms of air conditioning to keep yourself comfortable or some plant there so that you're not on electricity. Now we're in a really dry climate, so we could do water coolers. And that's personally what we're looking at is installing some water coolers to help us. We don't have central heat and air in our house on purpose. Okay. It's a hundred year old house. We could have put it in my husband and his dad were heating in there guys. And totally my, my father-in-law was planning to do it. And I said, uh, 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 -uh. you put those plans away. I do not want central heat and air in our house. And I am so glad we didn't put it in. So, uh, that's an idea on your refrigeration, you might consider uh, cutting down on the things that you are, that need to be refrigerated. That's how we're handling that one. There are other ways of refrigeration and you can look into that right now. Propane is also really high. So uh, there's different options there, but our thing is hopefully we can, cause you know, we're out on the farm, we're a long ways from place. So we have more than one refrigerator and we have more than one deep freeze. And so we're cutting down on what we actually have in the refrigerator that needs to be refrigerated. And so that's another thing that we're doing. Uh, just things like that. If you've got an electric hot water heater, plan to not use much hot water during the summer. If you've got, you know, just think of all of the ways, not just turning off the lights during certain times of the day, because those bulbs don't take as much electricity as what you think. Yeah. You know, the your, devices, your washer, and stuff, your dryer, your um, microwave, your toaster, your all of those things yeah uh, think of different ways to be able to do that um where are you going to do your cooking how are you going to do things you you need to be thinking of alternative alternative ways to do things you know um for the summer maybe try to uh do a you know i like to brown up a bunch of hamburger in the spring when the weather's nice and uh and then Freeze use it. that. Yeah. That way we can just kind of warm it up. We can put it in tortillas or whatever. And we don't have to do a lot of cooking them this summer because we don't have central heat in there. And so we don't want to have the oven or the stove going during the summer whenever it's 110 degrees in Oklahoma. So uh, think about these things now, because it's not just the fuel for your vehicle. Yeah, you start, start doing your research now on how you can legitimately cut down on your electric costs and stuff like that. Yeah, all, all your energy, all your energy. Have the children start playing games instead of charging their stuff. You know, uh, play board games, play card games. Yeah. Uh, have a fun. garden. Have yeah, a instead of garden. having tablets and cell phones and switches and xboxes plugged in all the time unplug them go play outside yes um, get, if it's too hot outside come in yes and, uh, and, and and regulate that get up when the sun comes up so you don't need the lights and then uh during the heat of the day plan inside uh read aloud time 
or games, you know, downtime that you can be in the shade, resting. Don't, don't stay up till midnight afternoon if you need CSF. light. Yes, and then go go to bed earlier. Yes, and the get sun up goes earlier. Down. Yep, and so get into that habit. Start working into that routine now. Start getting there now, and uh, that that will help you. So if you've made it all the way, I thank you so much. For sitting in on this uh share this out to people and let's try to get more likes so we can start doing these live on youtube yeah. i Make would sure you subscribe and try to yes. their people to subscribe to us as well yeah we need at least 50 subscribers before we can start doing these live on youtube and that would be having some people in the chat putting in information would be great if you uh are you know knowledgeable in some of these things and would like to talk to us on the podcast or something you know definitely get a hold of us our email should be down in the comments or visit prairiedusttrail.com and i've got my email right up there at the top and uh we've also got you can follow us on facebook uh instagram pinterest Basically, uh, go on. to our about page and you'll find all of the stuff there. You'll you'll find things and or make sure to sign up. Make we'll sure to sign up for our newsletter and you'll get updates when we put out a podcast and stuff like that. You'll get those right. updates. And we just thank you so much for for being here. Make sure to subscribe and share this out to your friends. And yeah, thank you so much. We will see y'all later. Later. Later.